I want to talk to you this morning, speaking from the subject, the secret of God. Amen. The secret of God. Thank you, ushers. The secret of God. Now, whenever you hear the word secret, everybody see his pop up. Everybody want to know what is the secret? What is the secret to being successful? What is the secret to being rich? Uh, what is the secret to accomplishing things? Well, uh, God has um, uh, some secrets, amen? And we're going to talk about uh, the secret of God, amen? Uh, the book of Proverbs was written, and uh, this is for everybody. I want you to try, try to get, get, a, get your head around this this morning because this will help us uh, with a lot of life's problems. The book of Proverbs was written to teach the believer and the reader uh, first of all, how to live life wisely. Uh, there, there are many people that are trying to live this life, but they're not living wisely. How to live life wisely. How to live life skillfully. Uh, it covers the subjects of family. <coughs> so if you've got problems in the family, Proverbs can help you with that. Uh, uh, its subject is also death. It covers uh, how to deal with uh, death. It covers uh, the subject of life. What is life? How to live life? It covers the subject of discretion, how to be discreet. Amen? Uh, also, uh, it deals, it, it also covers the subject of eating, how to eat healthy, how to eat right, how to be disciplined in our eating. Amen? It also covers uh, the subject of enemies. How do you treat your enemy? How do you know what an enemy is or who an enemy is and, and who an enemy is not? It also teaches uh, how to reverence God. It also uh, teaches uh, uh, the subject of, of a food. What is a food? Huh? And, 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 and how to recognize a food. Amen? It also teaches uh, the subject of friendship, how to be a friend. Mm -hmm. Amen? It also teaches the subject of the heart. How does the heart work? Uh, the seat of my emotions and your emotions. It also teaches about the mind, how I think, how to think correctly, uh, what happens when I'm not thinking correctly. Uh, how to govern my thoughts, amen. It also teaches the subject of the home. What is the home? What the home is not? Uh, what should the home be? It also teaches the subject of government. What is a government? What is not a government? What is the responsibility of a government? Also, uh, it also teaches, teaches the subject of knowledge, amen. It also teaches the believer and the reader about work, how to work. Uh, we're living in an age now where uh, uh, Younger people that are coming in the workforce, uh, many of them have to learn how to work. Mm -hmm. They want to check, but they don't want to work. Mm -hmm. uh, so you have to learn how to work, amen? And then some of us who have been working a long time, we still have to learn how to work better. Not harder, but smarter, yeah. amen? So how to work, amen? And then uh, it teaches uh, about the law. Uh, who was the law written for? The law was written for the lawbreaker. <laughs> amen? It, it also teaches... Uh, the, the subject uh, on the subject of love. Mm -hmm. What is love? What is real love? Uh, the difference between lust and love. Amen. The difference between infatuation and love. Amen. And then it also teaches about lazy people. Huh? Uh, and see, there are a lot of things that you can learn in God's Word. A lot of times we suffer in life because there's some things that uh, God is trying to teach us and His Word is trying to teach us, but we don't get the lesson because we don't read it and we don't study it. So it teaches us about lazy folks and how not to be lazy. Amen? And then it teaches us about peace. Amen? What is peace? Uh, I hear people talking all the time about no justice. I know peace. Amen. Well, you'll never have peace until you have Prince of Peace. Amen. And then it teaches about poverty. Amen. What is poverty? Why do we have poverty? Amen. How to get out of poverty. Amen. All of that is in the book of Proverbs. It teaches about prayer. What is prayer? How to pray? When to pray? What to pray about? Amen. Uh, also, it teaches us about pride. Hmm? One of the deadly sins that the Lord hates. Amen. It teaches us about pride. It teaches us also uh, about wealth, about riches. Uh, what is riches? How to get rich. How to get rich and stay rich, amen? It also, thank you, Holy Ghost, it also teaches us about sex. Talk to me, somebody in here. If everybody, if you talk about sex, everybody going to get quiet, huh? Yeah. This, this, is why, this is why a lot of our young people don't understand nothing, because, well, you know, it's time for you to have to talk. <laughs> you talk. It's, it's called sex. It, uh, call, it, call it sex and talk about sex, amen? And pass it up, be shame. No, I ain't shame. No, talk about sex, amen? Uh, you got here one way or the other. Hello, amen? And then uh, it, it talks about shame, hmm? how to handle shame, what is shame. Also talks about sin. Mm -hmm. hmm? and, and, and not only that, uh, it also talks about sleep. 
Mm -hmm. We have a lot of people that don't get enough sleep, huh? Don't know how to sleep, uh -huh. don't know when to sleep, yeah. uh, stay up all night long, yeah. then try to sleep while you're at work. Yeah. Talk to me somebody, how to be regulated in your sleep, mm -hmm. huh? It talks about sleep, and then it talks about uh, what is the soul? What, what is the soul all about? What makes up the soul? And then it talks about the spirit. Also gives us a subject on the tongue, huh? That little unruly member, amen? And then it helps us to recognize the wicked. What is wickedness, yeah. amen? And, and not only that, it gives us information about drinking. Mm hmm? Oh, come on here. Uh -huh. Everybody looking at me like that, like you ain't never tasted nothing. All right. Huh? Oh, you, ask a, you ask a question, everybody drop their head. Well, the Bible, the, the Bible said don't be drunk. Amen. Amen. It, it, it didn't say don't drink. It said don't be drunk. Uh -huh. <laughs> Amen. Amen. Uh, and so it also teaches, uh, Proverbs teaches also about women. Mm -hmm. Huh? Uh, uh, for, the, for, the, for, the, for the male, if you want to know about a woman or uh, 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 know anything about uh, uh, the anatomy of a woman or what makes a woman or who, or who a woman is or how to find a woman or whatever, uh, the book of Proverbs will teach you that. Amen. Amen. The book of Proverbs also teaches about a man. But you got to read the book. All right. Hello, somebody in here. Yeah. And then another thing. We got all these tore up, jacked up relationships. Mm. Huh? Well, the reason they're jacked up and tore up is nobody consulted the book. Right. You, 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 I, I said a few Sundays ago, you, 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 you looking at Jimmy. You want Jimmy. You don't want nobody else but Jimmy. Uh -huh. huh? Just got to have Jimmy. Jimmy ran on off somewhere. You saw Jimmy 10 years later. You started shouting, talking in tongues. <laughs> Lord, thank you so much. <laughs> you didn't give me Jimmy. <laughs> Amen. Amen. But back in the day, you just had to have Jimmy. Yeah. Hello, somebody in here. So it teaches us about relationships. Amen. It teaches us also about trust. Hey, trust. Amen. And it also teaches us the meaning of words. The impact that words have. Uh, uh, there's some words that we speak and, that, and some things that we say. You can't take it back after you have said it. Amen. You, once you rung a bell, you can't unring it. Amen. Amen. And so we have to be mindful of our words. And so the book of Proverbs is full of exactly that. Proverbs. Uh, things of pertaining to wisdom, things pertaining to, uh, well, let me put it this way, godly wisdom and godly knowledge, amen? Our text today opens up with a statement from God, uh, not a question, but a statement. And the statement is not a matter of being true or false, amen? It's not a true or false statement. So when God makes a statement, well, is it true? No, it's a statement, amen? Because uh, God said, uh, because God said it, that's what makes it true. Let me say it slow. Because God said it. That's what makes it true, amen? Mm -hmm. uh, I, I, and, and not only that, but um, humanity's position and the world's position is uh, to believe or not to believe what God said. Mm -hmm. And I'm so glad that God does not twist anybody's arm. Huh? Uh -huh. God gives us the freedom of the will. God said, now you can believe it or not believe it. All right. but, but, but that doesn't mean that God didn't say it and that doesn't mean that it's not true, amen? God gives us the freedom of the will. God says that a forward person, a forward person, is an abomination to him. Any person that is a forward person is an abomination uh, to him. Now, a forward person is a person uh, who is a transgressor against God. Uh, do you know any people like I do? We all do. Amen? Uh, a forward person uh, 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 describes a person who is a stubborn person. This, this is characteristic, a stubborn person. A person who's contrary to uh, the word and the will of God. A person that is disobedient towards God and his word. That's what a forward person is. Amen? Uh, and not only that, uh, but being, for being forward is an attitude or an act that is uh, uh, incompatible with, the, with God's nature. Mm -hmm. So anybody or any movement or any person or any ideology uh, that is uh, contrary uh, to the will and the word of God is a forward uh, position, amen? It is an attitude or an act of, uh, of uh, uh, being uh, incompatible with God's nature. And, and, and not only that, but God says that he hates that, amen? It is intolerable. There are some things in life. There are some people in life. There, 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 there is a condition in some people in life that God hates. He can't stand it. Right. Amen. And that's what he's saying here. Now, a forward uh, is being clever uh, or being thought to be clever when in, a in actuality uh, that same person is being arrogant. Amen. Have you ever met a person that was so top heavy? Mm. 
Hmm? They were so top heavy too. They were just arrogant all the time. Uh, it, it's kind of hard to tolerate folks like that. Amen. Uh, they, they come up, they have a certain air about themselves. They're arrogant. Amen. And they profess themselves to be wise, but they're fools in disguise. Amen. Right. And not only that, uh, uh, a forward person is a person many times, the only time that they're really revealed, so they can be on the cover. The only time they're really revealed is when it comes time to die. Mm -hmm. See, death Death is, is, is a common denominator, huh? Everybody gonna die at one time or another, amen? And so there are some things about some people that you can know all your life and you really don't really get to know them until they die or until such time as they're going to die and right. then you find out who they really are, amen? Right. Uh, death has a way of disrobing folks. Yeah. Can I preach in here? Yeah. Huh? Yeah, 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 death has a way of uncovering some stuff, amen? Especially when you got to wait to die. Oh, okay. Uh, and so it, can, it, it reveals who the person is. An abomination uh, leads to God's anger and to his judgment. Uh, uh, when God has to deal with an abomination, uh, he moves love aside and deals with that abomination with judgment and anger. The abominable are under the curse of God. Let me help you out. Uh, there are many people that are walking, breathing every day, working every day on a job. They laugh, they talk, they do everything everybody else does, but they are living under a curse and don't even know they're living under a curse. Amen? And so uh, the issue here is that an abominable person uh, is a person that's under the curse of God, and many times they are without knowing. Uh, they only achieve temporary success. In other words, God says, here's what I would like for you to, to have. Uh, he, here's how successful I would like you to be. But because you are an abomination to me, you, you can only have temporary success. Amen. You can only have part of what I really want you to have. And why? Because it is your attitude towards me. Amen. You'll find that in Psalm 73, 16 through 20. Amen. So they only achieve uh, temporary success and their end is ruined. You ever see a person start off good? All right. <laughs> and their end ends up in ruin? Mm -hmm. Someone off the track somewhere. Yeah. Reputation messed up, family messed up, uh, bankrupt, everything. Start out well. Yeah. Huh? Well, somewhere along the line, uh, they did not honor God as they should have. Somewhere along the line, they put God out. Uh, uh, at one time, God was riding in the car with them, but they pulled over and kicked him out. Mm. I'm going to leave you alone. Amen? And so the word abom uh, an abomination is defined as a perverted person. Hmm? Yeah, let, me, let me see if I can help you out here. There are some people, uh, they look fine every day. But if you follow them home and close the door, uh -huh. huh? Mm -hmm. th there's a perversion there, a perverted attitude. Uh, there is some perversion that takes place in the house. Amen? Uh, and so that is a perverted person. That's a wicked person. A one who turns away from the word of God. Let me tell you something. Anytime you try to, you, you're talking to a person and they get all mean and mad, upset uh, because you try to say anything to them about God, that's, that person is an abomination to God. I don't want to hear nothing about God. Okay. You, we all have had them. We, we all know who they are. We may have been some of them at one time. Amen? And so uh, they turn away from the word of God. All humanity uh, at one time and even now may be an abomination to God. You know some folks that, that are abomination to him? I do too. Hmm? Uh, when, when Adam sinned, Adam and Eve sinned in the garden, all humanity at that moment became an abomination to God. At that moment, uh, they were uh, enemies of God, and, and, and they were uh, their mind and their heart was away from God. Amen. You'll find that in Genesis three and six. Uh -huh. Amen. In Romans three twenty three, Galatians three twenty two, Romans six uh, thirty two, Ephesians two and eight, and Isaiah fifty three and six. Now, any believer, uh, unbeliever rather, uh, in God in Christ would uh, would not understand the secret. God does not reveal his secret to everybody. I want you to get that. Amen? And, and so an unbeliever in God in Christ will not understand the secret of God. God's secret is sealed up from all except those to whom he reveals it to. God is smarter than man. Oh, come on here. A person can sit down and read God's word and be an abomination and never get anything out of it. Hmm? Never get anything out of it. Just read it, read it, read it. Don't, never get anything. Why? Because God has has uh, 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 concealed it from him. Yeah. 
or her, amen, and, but he reveals it to those that are his, to his saints, amen. He reveals his secret to his saints. He reveals his secret to his saints. I want you to get that because I want you to check yourself and understand, is God concealing anything from me or is God trying to reveal something to me, amen? When Jesus spoke in parables, <clears throat> many could not understand them. Sadly, today, when people read the parables of Jesus, many don't understand them today. There's a reason for that. Well, I don't understand that. You know, and when I try to sit down and read the Bible, I get all confused. I just put it down, close it up. When Jesus spoke in parables, many could not understand them. A parable is an earthly story with a heavenly meaning. Mm -hmm. Amen? But Jesus used parables, watch this carefully, to reveal truth to those who would believe in him and to conceal truth from those who couldn't believe uh -huh. or those who would not, to the person that was an abomination that would not believe and, and could not believe, he concealed the parable, he concealed the truth. To those who, who wanted to know, who were his, he revealed. That's why he spoke in parables. He wasn't trying to confuse nobody. What he was saying is that if you're really mine, you'll understand it. If you're not mine, you won't understand it. That was the purpose of parables. And he spoke that way because Jesus did not waste words. Hello, somebody. Uh, the Bible says, cast not your pearls before swine. Yeah, man. Huh? And so he didn't waste words with folks. He didn't go around arguing with folks. He didn't go around trying to convince folks that didn't want to be convinced. Mm -hmm. huh? He just left, left them alone. And that was the purpose of the parable. Uh, he used parables to reveal the truth to those who would believe and to conceal the truth from those who would not believe. God's secret is not understood by human intellect. Right. I want you to get that. No, right. human intellect can't get God's secret. It, uh, uh, reasoning, human reasoning cannot get God's secret. The secret of God is only revealed, watch this, by the spirit and by the wisdom of God. Let me tell you something. You keep on walking around in somebody's church dead. Keep on walking around void of the Spirit. Keep on walking around grieving the Holy Ghost, if you please. Right. Amen. And what happens is that you cannot receive God's Spirit. It's amazing when you see folk come to church year after year, month after month, week after week, and never, ever, ever allow God's Spirit to work on the inside. Right. Talk to me in here. Right. And so His Spirit is revealed, uh, his, his secret rather is reve revealed by the Spirit and the wisdom of God. That's why it's so important that I understand that the moment that I accept Jesus Christ, his spirit comes to live on the inside of me. And, and when his spirit comes in to live on the inside of me, it is my job to stir up yeah. Amen. the spirit that is within me. Amen. So that I can so that I can understand and so that God can reveal his secrets to me. Amen. You'll find that in Romans 8, 4 through uh, 10, and also 1 Corinthians 2, uh, 12 through 16, and Matthew 6 and 30, uh, 23. Now, uh, the secret of God is with those who acknowledge and reverence him. If you do not acknowledge God, in all thy ways acknowledge him, and he will direct your path. Amen. If you do not acknowledge him, and if you do not acknowledge him as God, see, a whole lot of folks acknowledge him, but they don't acknowledge him as God. <laughs> Amen? In other words, uh, I acknowledge him as God, but then I got all these other little gods at home. Uh, yeah. Huh? I got, all the, I, I got a couple of gods on the, on the mantel at, uh, I, uh, over the fireplace, and then I got another god on top of the refrigerator. Huh? All this foolishness. So I need to acknowledge God as God. Amen. And, and, and you'll find that in Psalms 25 and 14, Amos 3 and 7, and James 4 and 8, and also Romans 1, 18 through 25. God says that he has a secret, and his secret is with the righteous. I want you to get that. Uh, and I want you to hold that thought right there, because we're going to deal with some things about who the righteous are. Amen. His secret is with uh, the righteous. Amen. And um, we, 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 the task for us today is to determine who we are hmm? and what the secret of God is. First of all, before I start reaching out for God's secret, I need to check myself. Hmm? I need to check myself and make sure uh, of who I am. Amen. And before I start dealing with what God's secret is, because quite frankly, I might not be worthy of his secret. 
I might be still in abomination bill. <laughs> and so what I need to do is check me first. And so God has many secrets, but we're concerned today with his secret that is with the righteous. Amen? Now notice the text is not speaking about self-righteous. I want to clear that up. Uh, because many people uh, get, uh, get uh, uh, righteousness and self-righteousness confused, amen? So we're not talking about the self-righteous because being self-righteous is an abomination to God. Amen. Talk to me in here, somebody. Yeah. Uh, God's secret is with those who are genuinely his. Uh -huh. You see, uh, we have a lot of people that like to fool folks. Mm. Hmm? Listen, there are folk that can come into your midst they know more how to act like, uh, they, like, like they're saved than you do. Mm, all right. They walk like they're saved. They talk like they're saved. Um, they know when to say amen. <laughs> they, they know all of the nuances that people do in church, amen? Uh, but yet, they're still not God's. And so we may be able to fool uh, uh, people when it comes to our relationship with God, but you'll never fool God. You'll never fool God. This is why sometimes you see folks in church raising all kinds, making a whole, whole lot of noise. Mm. Huh? All right. But it's not your fault, no way. And so they stay in the same place all the time. Mm. Mm. They just come and make noise and go home. Yeah. Mm. Why? Because they, are, they, they can fool the people in church, but you can't fool God. Amen? Yeah. And, and so we'll never fool him. Romans 11, 33, and Deuteronomy 29 and 29, and Psalm 79. God's secret is dependent upon who and what we are in him. His secret depends on who we are. Uh, the revealing of his secret depends on who we are and what we are in him. Uh, we're not born righteous. Hello, somebody. I want you to understand that. See, there's so many people trying to be saved in their own way. They're trying to be saved the way they think being saved should be. Mm -hmm. and, and so we're not born uh, righteous, amen? Uh, 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 the Bible says that our righteousness is as a filthy rag before God, amen? And so we're not born uh, righteous. We have to be made righteous. Huh. Hello, somebody in here. Right, uh, don't, don't start around talking about you took a bath in, in, uh, in sweetheart soap last night or this morning, so you're right. good. No, no. It, it, that's not the kind of, that's self-righteous mm. right there, amen? And so our own righteousness is as a filthy rag. Being righteous does not mean that we cross every T. Mm -hmm. Being righteous does not mean that we dot every I. Huh? Mm -hmm. You see, some folks are trying to live righteous, uh, but, but, but they don't know how to live righteous. Amen? And so they try, and the minute something goes wrong in life, they go all the way back and start all over again. Mm -hmm. Oh, I'm so unworthy. <laughs> you got to understand righteousness from God's perspective. Amen? Ecclesiastes 7 and 15 and Ecclesiastes 8 and 12 and 14. Our righteousness is in Christ. That's where your righteousness is. You, there's nothing that I can do to be made right. Mm -hmm. My righteousness and your righteousness is wrapped up in Jesus Christ. Amen. Right. God made Christ to be sin for us. Mm -hmm. he, Christ, he made him to be sin for us be, because he was sinless. Amen. So that we could believe in him and could be made the righteousness of God in him. When Jesus hung on Calvary, that is when God made him sin for us. He who knew no sin was made sin so that we could be made the righteousness of God through him. That's what Calvary was all about. That's what the good news is all about. The righteousness of Christ is applied uh, to the saints of God on a daily basis. On a daily basis. Amen. Just like God's mercy and his Amen. grace is new every day, yeah. uh, God's righteousness upon you who are his is new every day. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. Romans 1 and 17 and 1 Corinthians 1 and 30, Psalms 32 and, and 2, and John, say John 1 and 29, and also 1 Peter 1 and 19. Now, the secret of God is wrapped up in our belief in the work of Jesus. I heard it. I'm, I'm doing, I'm pretty good. I'm a good person. I keep the Ten Commandments. Mm. I don't curse. I don't drink. I don't try to hurt nobody. Mm. Well, oh, that's wonderful. But, but in God's eye, the issue is, uh, how do you look at it? How do you deal with my son who hung on Calvary for you? Mm. 
Come on, somebody. Amen. Uh, Jesus, the record says that he was the Lamb of God uh, who takes away the sins of the world. Amen. That abomination, that's a sin. Huh? The Lamb came to take that. Amen. Uh, a a forward-thinking person, a minded person, that's a sin. The Lamb came to take that. Amen. And so if you're a believer in, God, in, in Christ, God has uh, hidden his secret in you. That's why you got to be careful. What you do and how you do. <laughs> you don't hear me, do you? Amen. You see, the moment that I confessed Christ, the moment that I accepted Christ, uh, God's secret was imparted on the inside of me. Amen? And so the Bible says that uh, God's secret is Christ dwelling in me and imparting in me the Holy Spirit and instructing me in his word. You see, I cannot have uh, God's secret by accepting his son, Jesus Christ, and then grieving the Holy Ghost, All right. and then not getting in his word, <laughs> because all of that wrapped up together is God's secret, amen? And God's secret is uh, his glory in me, uh, in Christ in me, the spirit in me, which is my hope of glory. What I'm trying to tell you is that when God looks at me, and when he looks at you, uh, if you're his, he has put his secret on the inside of me and you. And what he wants back is, he wants me, just like the choir got through singing, he wants me to walk like I am his own. Oh, you don't hear me yet, do you? Right. He wants me to talk just like I am his own. And uh, he wants me to treat my neighbor just like I am his own. I need to know how to treat my neighbor. I need to know how to love, be unlovable. Yeah. And so uh, the secret of God is in me. Mm. How I treat everybody. Mm. How I let my light so shine. And the Bible says that when God looks at me and he sees his secret, what he sees in me and what he sees in you is he see uh, when his son went up the way of the cross. Hmm. When he looks at me and you and he sees his secret in us, he sees uh, where his son uh, was arrested one night coming out of a garden. Yeah. He sees where um, they put him all night long. Yeah. And uh, he sees where Jesus was marched from judgment hall to judgment hall, yeah. but he never said a mumbling word. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And not only that, but um, when God sees you and I, and when he looks at his secret, his mind goes back to the wise me. You know the story about the wise men, don't you? Right. He told the wise men that um, I need you to go see where my son is born at. And uh, I'm not going to tell you the exact place because it is a secret. Mm -hmm. And so I want you wise men uh, to just look up uh, in the sky. And uh, when you see the star, uh, I just need you to follow the star. I'm going to leave you alone here in a minute. And uh, when you follow the star, and wherever the star stops at, that's where my son will be born. And, uh, and so the story is uh, that the Magi uh, saw the star in the east, uh, yeah. and uh, they followed that star, uh, and uh, the star hovered over Bethlehem of Judea. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And uh, the Bible said uh, they went in, uh, and they found the child, uh, and uh, they brought him uh, some gifts. Mm. And uh, the Bible said uh, that they brought him some gold. <laughs> yeah. And then the Bible said that they brought him some frankincense. Mm. And then the Bible said that they brought him uh, some merit. And uh, all of those gifts were gifts for a king. I got to leave you alone here. Yeah. And so they bought him gold because he was rich. I got to get out of here and leave you alone. And I'm trying to tell you that God wants the best for his children. And uh, they brought him some frankincense. You don't hear me, do you? Well, uh, the frankincense was 
to worship. I got to leave you alone. The Lord wants us to worship him in spirit and in truth. And he brought, they brought him some frankincense because he was, he was God in the flesh. And he, they wanted him to continue to worship his father. And then they brought him some myrrh. And man, is, 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 they brought him man because they knew that he was going to die. And uh, I got to get out of here and leave you alone. But the Bible said that Christ was fully human and fully divine. And uh, he gave his life a ransom for many. And uh, you know the story, don't you? He came teaching, preaching, and healing. But I stopped by to tell you that he came to die. And he came to die for you and me. And so the story is that they marched him up Galgotha's hill. And at the top of the hill, the Bible said that they put nails in his holy hands. They put nails in his holy feet. They put a crown of thorns on his holy head. They raised him up and dropped him low. And he hung right there on Calvary's cross. He hung them from the sixth hour until the ninth hour. He was God and he could have came down. All he had to do was just ring up heaven and send a legion of angels and they would have come down and defended him. But he hung right there. He hung there because of God's love. You don't hear me. The Bible said, for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. So he hung right there because of the Father's love. And the Bible said that they spit him in his side. All in one, water and blood came running down. But that's not the end of the story. The record is that he hung his head in the locks of his shoulder, and he gave up the ghost. Yeah. They didn't kill him, but he gave up the ghost. You don't hear me? Yes. They took Jesus down and laid him in a rich man's grave. Three days and three nights, but early yeah. on the third day. Yes. Early on the third day. Yes. You don't hear me? I don't know nothing in the world about early. All I know is that we got 24 hours on the clock, but early. Yeah. On the third day, do you know he rose? Yeah. I know he rose. Is there anybody in here that know Jesus rose? If you know he rose, can somebody say yeah? I know he rose. He rose down in my heart. He rose down in my soul. He rose all over me. When Jesus rose, he rose from the dead with all power in heaven and earth. In his hand. I got to go to my seat, but I feel pretty good. You don't hear me. I need to tell somebody on my way to heaven. You don't hear me. On Sunday, April the 13th, on a Sunday, 1963, well, the second Sunday, I'm going to leave you alone here. I was sitting in the church. I heard the preacher preaching about the goodness of the Lord. I heard him said that Jesus died for my sin so that I could be made the righteousness of God. I heard him tell me that the Lord had a secret for me. If I would just get up and give my hand to the preacher, but give my heart, all my heart to God, I got up and I made my way. You don't hear me just as I am, step by step. I was dirty. I had sin all in my eyes. I had sin was in my heart. I had sin all over my feet. I'm going to leave you alone here. I didn't have on new shoes. I did not have on a new suit. But I came to Jesus just like I was. You don't hear me. And the Lord had made me glad. The Lord had put running in my feet. Every once in a while, I hear joy bells ring all down in my heart. I've been rising.
busted in Jesus' name. I've been fallen in Jesus' name. I have not always been right. And I have not always been wrong. But God has always been God. And he is a way maker. He's a way out of no way. And I'm going to leave you alone here. But God is waiting for me. He's waiting. He's waiting for you. Yeah. One day, by and by, it'll all be over after a while. But I stop by to tell you, I want to witness to you this morning that I got a home just go on in glory land. And it's mine, all mine. I got a new walk just over in glory land. I'm going to leave you alone here, but I got a new name just go on in glory land. The Lord wrote my name in the book of life. You don't hear me. I'm not worried about dying. I'm not worried about getting sick. I'm not worried about folk talking about me. Talk about me just as much as you please. The more you talk, I'm going to bend my knee. Because I know that I have the Lord secret in me. The Lord secret. Is Christ in you yeah. the hope of glory? Have you got him? Do you know him? Yes. Do you know him for yourself? Yeah. I heard my grandmother talking about Jesus. Yeah. She said it was all right. I heard my granddad talking about Jesus. He was all right. I heard my mother talk about Jesus. Said it was all right. I heard my daddy talk about Jesus. Said it was all right. But when I met Jesus, I met him for myself. And I found out that the man is, he's all right. He's a way. I love no way. He's a bridge over trouble water. Leave you alone here. He will make your enemy leave you alone. He's money. If you don't have any money, you don't hear me. He's love. If you can't find love, I'm just trying to tell you that the man is all right. Yes. Oh, yeah. Yeah. You're all right. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Don't take everybody's word for it. Yeah. Yeah. Try it for yourself. Yeah. Amen. 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 Most of all, I don't want you to leave here today mm. without understanding mm. God's secret. Mm. Is Christ in you the hope of glory? God is waiting on everybody. Yeah. He's waiting on everybody. He's sitting, sitting on his throne in heaven. And he's waiting for everybody. Mm. Unfortunately, everybody's not going there. All right. mm. okay. If you have Christ in you, the hope of glory, he's waiting for you. Yeah. And he's waiting for me. Amen. The door of the church is open for the reception of members. I hope you got something out of the message today. Mm -hmm. Choir gives us a